So you love podcasts, and you want to listen to more amazing content, but you have no idea what to listen to. And your friends keep telling you about great episodes, yet you can never remember what they told you. Well, here's the answer. Good Pods. It's the social app dedicated to podcasts, where your friends, podcast listeners, and favorite podcast hosts all come together to share on their feeds what they recommend and what they listen to. You can connect to others, bookmark episodes, start a conversation about the episode, connect to the hosts, and most importantly, listen to great podcasts right in the Good Pods app. Download Good Pods wherever you get your apps and start sharing with a community that loves to listen. Good Pods, it's where to connect and listen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been to the Great Wall of China. I have seen the pyramids of Egypt. I even witnessed a grown man satisfy a camel. But never in all my years as a sportscaster have I witnessed something as improbable, as impossible, as what we've witnessed here today. It's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. A third of the people love you, a third don't care about you, and a third hate you. So you concentrate on the third that love you and you go for it. I think the greatest uh, Achilles heel for leaders is they don't give themselves time to think. So my journey is one of those, like there are a lot of detours, there's a lot of going off on the side roads. Thrive Out listeners, you're in for a treat. We're here with Jamal Mashburn. Jesse Itzler. The John Maxwell. Jackie the Joke Man Martling. New York Rangers great Mike Richter. Lisa Lampanelli. Mary Carrillo. Oh, Edward. how nice. I'm actually going through the practice of being an entrepreneur. Pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and thrive loud. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. I love it. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a real estate investor, developer, and agent who has found his niche in the industry, acting as an investment property specialist and actually representing buyers instead of sellers in the transaction process. He has also completed multiple joint venture projects, equity partnerships, and works as a developer, completing over 120 transactions in less than a year. He has found a process and relies on his most valuable priorities to guide his profit-producing activities. He's founded Live Free Investments, a successful real estate investment firm that ensures strong returns on capital from secure, collateralized real estate investments. He's a former Oakland Raider, but somehow is living in Kansas City. Thrive Loud listeners, Logan Freeman. Logan, how are you today? Like I mentioned before, I am energized, thriving, and focused. And man, I have to tell you, you just cracking me up, Lou. You are a uh, you are a great host, and just a very. You mean I don't know if you could double as a comedian, but man, I you got I haven't had a smile on my face this long for a while. So I appreciate that. I'm I'm letting uh, I'm recording this very moment. I'm gonna. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to send it to my very good friend, Drew Tarvin, who has been a guest on the show, who is a comedian, and just to prove that I can be funny. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so so let's, I'm going to work backwards here from that bio. First of all, you're a former NFL player. And uh, explain to me this whole bit. You grew up in the area, right? You're from Kansas City. Is that the, the region where you're from? I grew up in Jefferson City. So not Jefferson too far City, from right. here, though. Okay. Gotcha. So I, I got my geography wrong, but I got Missouri, the right state, unlike That's someone right. else who got the state completely wrong. Someone else, maybe he's known as the president when the Chiefs won the World Series, uh, won the Super Bowl. Uh, you played in the NFL. What position did you play? I was an offensive lineman, and so I played center and guard in the NFL. So what you're telling me is you're a very small individual and stuff. tiny, you know, really, really <laughs> small. I fit in all of the airports and and car seats and all of that. Yeah, I'm really so super small guy. Logan, where did you uh, go to college? University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg, which is about an hour east of, of Kansas City, Division II school. So many people listening to this show are always amazed at professional athletes, and it is really difficult in every single professional sport to become a professional. It's even harder to maintain being a professional uh, athlete out there. This is the question I have for you. Can you share the competitive nature you have inside of you? each and every day because it takes someone to be really competitive and really forward thinking and thriving to to get to the pro level. 
Absolutely. You know, Lou, I think it was it was baked into me from my parents. And I, and I have a feeling now that I'm a parent that there is a lot to be said about uh, the environment that you, you kind of grow up in, uh, the nature versus nurture kind of question. But for my, the, the nature that I was put in and the nurture, my, my dad is a Native American uh, Lumbee uh, tribe Indian uh, from North Carolina. He grew up with 13 brothers and sisters in a one bedroom house on a, on a, on a farm that, that grew tobacco. And Ooh. so my dad grew up probably when he was six years old, started working in the farm. My mom grew up in a family that had a lot of kids as well. Uh, but my dad uh, made some, well, we'll just call it poor decisions while I was growing up. So my mom had to work two full-time jobs as OB nurse and working in a senior housing community uh, as a nurse as well to, to kind of put us kids through school and so and, and give us a, a good life. And so I watched this, this kind of work ethic be ingrained in me as a young individual. And my, my father, for all the faults that he may or may not have, have had, he, he told me from a, a young age, Logan, if you set your mind to something, you can achieve it. You're the only person that can stop you. And I was dumb enough to listen and actually believe what he said. So every time in my life, people are like, what, what do you mean you're going to do this? What do you mean you're going to bench press this, squat that, weigh this and still run like that? And I said, well, I mean, my dad told me I could, so I, I, I can do it. And so I've just taken that same work ethic. I'm not the physically gifted uh, you know, human being, but I, I molded myself through hard work and discipline and focus working on towards one intentional goal that allowed me to kind of elevate to the next level. Let's carry that off because I do realize how competitive and how challenging being in the real estate industry is. And that's got lots of pluses and minuses and ups and downs and ebbs yeah. and flows. Uh, as you made the move from professional sports and then into this career, how did you set that same discipline that's been ingrained in you into the workplace? Well, I think for me, it was being, being a coachable person as an athlete, they provide you kind of what I'll call the recipe for success, so to speak. And some coaches are better than others, but there's ingredients that go into these recipes. And for athletics, I knew what it was. It was, it was eating right. It was working out hard. It was making the right decisions on the weekends. It was having the straight uh, mentality that you needed to have to, to play football and at a high level. So there was all of these recipe that I had put together from my coaches. When I started in the business world, I had really no recipe. So what I started to do was search and I started to search for knowledge. But knowledge alone is not power. Knowledge is potential power in my books. Knowledge plus action is really what power is. And so I started to read books. And, and we don't have the video on right now, but my whole background is just books. And it just goes on forever. My wife is always calling me a nerd. She's like, did you not read enough in, in college and high school? I was like, I don't think I ever read in college or high school. But I'm reading now. And so I took that and I created a new recipe for my Myself. And I and I figured out in my niche in the commercial real estate world what I needed to do after evaluating the market. So I was in the startup world as well. And so they always talk about product market fit. What you're building, is there a need in it, right? Is there a need for that? So I looked at the commercial real estate world and I figured out a big need that was being underserved. And then I built a business around that need. And I created this recipe and I started to aggregate these right ingredients that allowed me to elevate above my competition because I'm doing something different that's never been done before in the commercial real estate space. Okay, so let's go to this because I, I want to talk shop here because I'm always a big fan of, of finding the unique aspect of what you're looking for. The unique piece is that you went to help the buyers. Is That's that right. The focus and explain, explain that to our listeners and help understand that instrumental difference because that's important for everyone who's not familiar with your world to understand why that's unique. Yes. Let's delineate between kind of what a lot of folks think about when they, when they hear real estate, it's the, the house flippers or the single family home side of things. This is, I'm, I'm working on five to $50 million transactions. And so it's a much larger stakes. And, and so when you think about this, a seller, an owner of a property enlists a, what's called a broker to list that property. That broker 
typically does one of two things. One, they're going to do what's called co-brokering, meaning they're going to invite other brokers to bring their clients to that transaction, or they're not going to co-broker, meaning they are going to basically um, take it to their own buyers and keep the fee for themselves. So what I saw happening here in Kansas City was that all of these large properties were being sold in-house at these brokerage firms. Coincidentally, I started connecting with the people that were buying those properties. And I said, hey, you know, I know this was a big transaction. How did it go? What went well? What didn't go well? Just walk me through all of that. And I learned that a lot of these guys either owned a property in a different market and they were doing what's called a 1031 exchange to defer their capital gains tax. Yeah. And so they would be trading up into a larger property. And I mean, you could go from a fourplex in California to a 50 unit property in Kansas City. That That's the appreciation that they were sitting on. Meaning, if managing a four unit transaction is a lot different than a 50 unit transaction. And so these sellers and these listing agents were just going out to these buyers that were unrepresented. And the, and the seller's agent has a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that they sell that property for the highest price possible. Well, if a buyer comes in unrepresented, they're basically going to withhold information unless the buyer um, can find out for himself uh, the, the, the information that you would need to make a really, really good decision on an investment property. And these gentlemen and, and ladies were telling me, unfortunately, after we closed, we found out this, this, and this. And I said, oh my gosh. What if I represented these buyers and I found that, that, and that out before they bought the property? Because it's not just about transactions, Lou. This is their livelihood. These are people's hard-earned money that they have spent on a property and they're working to, to get to, to financial freedom. And I saw these, bro and it's not, there's nothing wrong with what the brokers were doing, but you know, I guess from a, from a business perspective, there's very legal, everybody does it. But from a morality standpoint and an ethical standpoint, I knew that I could play on figuring out what those facts were before going under contract and buying a multi-million dollar property and then, and then closing on it and finding out something completely different afterwards. And so that is kind of the, the niche and the need that I have of, of kind of created for myself and help people that don't live in Kansas City to go through on the transaction side of things. You see, this is not surprising to me, Logan, because based on the fact that your job was to pick up defenses and, and, and formations right? and understand where the uniqueness is, is obviously what you did. You just basically figured out how I could pancake this situation. That's I like exactly I right. like where this went to. <laughs> uh, I also know this from another point of view, and um, I have some personal friends and, and other business associates that have actually had to deal with it. What you just described was really important. Um, some people are selling one piece of property and need to buy another, a new plant, a new factory, a new office and building, whatever yep. it is. The tax laws based on every state is all different. Uh, but in many of the cases you have a, in some cases, like I know in New York, it's a 45 day window before right. you get crushed with capital gains implications and stuff like that. So Ooh, same, a, that's, that's, that's across the country. That's an okay, IRS, the federal goal, uh, federal law. Yep. Yep. So, so th that uniqueness, thank you for clarifying, uh, is something that's really important because you have to be in the game plan, in the huddle. I'm yes. using all the sports jargon today. You got me on a Friday I today. I love it. I'm, I'm just, Logan, I'm just going like to drop it like it's hot. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take all of that and we're going to make sure that you're, on, you're in the game planning for that process, which is so important for these guys because uh, as they're looking to make the buying acquisition, you have to know what's going on in all equations. Very cool, by the way. Uh, and that's Thank what you. Live Free Investments is, is mostly focused on. Is that the main piece of it or is that a, an offshoot from what you've been doing? Yeah. So Live Free Investments actually is a investment firm that helps the same folks that were actively participating in buying real estate to be more passive. Many people yeah. don't understand that you can get all the benefits of owning real estate without having to manage it. So through the same process that I was going through, I learned that I could take these 1031 exchange dollars and do what's called a tenant in common structure. Meaning we are going to buy a property together. You can roll your capital gains into this new property and I will manage it for you. And so there's there was this big need for, for me to put projects together, maybe larger projects that one person couldn't take down, but maybe I have four or five 1031 exchanges that allowed me to go source the property, manage the whole 
whole process and then to be more passive because so many folks get into real estate thinking that they're going to be a passive investor, but there's nothing passive about actively owning real estate. So Live Free Investments was born out of my brokerage business because I Got heard it. a big need from these clientele. And that's kind of what brought us into the syndication world now that we're bringing it to everyday people that can invest in private real estate now. I'm going to ask this question because this is going to be really interesting because you're in the middle of the country and I'm up here in, uh, in the Northeast, just outside of New York City. And at the time we're recording this, late June 2020, uh, the biggest concern relating to what's going on with COVID in the largest city in our nation right. is what's happening to commercial real estate. Sure. And a quick summary of this. A lot of people are leaving the city. A lot of people got used to working at home and don't really want to come back in. Yep. Um, and people don't need as much space as they used to. And, and this is a near-term situation and also a good one because it's going to re-challenge and reprice the market. But obviously, making commercial REITs, the real estate um, area here in the city, a real unique space. Talk to me from your perspective uh, as you would be looking at this from the buyer's point of view. Yeah. Um, and how obviously things like this create opportunity. This might be a sit and wait, <laughs> sit this set of downs out. Here I am again, man. Stop me with the jargon. <laughs> uh, sit this sit this piece out and wait until everything kind of uh, settles down. What's your thought with what's going on? How is that around the country from yep. your perspective, what you've been saying? Well, we could probably have a, a four hour conversation about this alone. Which we won't. However, <laughs> what I'll say is this. Real estate is extremely, extremely niche in two different ways. One is a geographical location. So if you, you might not know this, and, and, and I didn't know this until probably two years ago, many folks, uh, foreign uh, investors, buy all of that real estate that you see in New York City as, as basically a bank, a bank account, right? So they have yep. all this money that they're trying to get out of their country because they're not real sure where their country is going and park it somewhere that uh, is safe and reliable. And if it doesn't make income, uh, okay, fine. I've got it owned in, in cash. I, it's, it's, it's basically what's called a trophy asset. And so that's one thing that you have to think about when people are talking about, you know, these companies are going to be, you know, really struggling with this office and, and all of these different things. Sure. Um, but at the same time, you have to look at who owns the real estate in the Midwest. It's very different. Most of the mm -hmm. owners of the real estate here are what I'll call, um, you know, regional players, guys out of Chicago, guys maybe out of, of Texas or even uh, some California that, that have a really large real estate company. They might have some holdings here, but we do not have the same type of foreign ownership here in Kansas City. And so one the, the first point that I wanted to make was you really have to be careful about making generalizations of when, when we're talking about real estate because it's so niche. Even inside of Kansas City, there's six different submarkets that are acting different. Than, than our downtown is. So it's extremely hyper local, but then also the second is the asset class. Because as we talk about, okay, you know, companies aren't going to go back. I'm watching my, my wife's uh, sister's company uh, that she works for, Cerner, which is one of the largest employers here in Kansas City, 22,000 employees. I'm watching them go through the process of, you know, they just built this massive office. They're like, well, I don't know what to do with this real estate now because our people can work from home. But I think that you have to also to know that from a housing standpoint, this has shown people, one, they want larger houses. Two, they want larger apartments or, you know, different apartments. And so there's always going to be a need for obviously housing. What's really interesting to watch is the different asset class and is how they're responding. And quite frankly, my crystal ball broke yesterday. And so I was not able to bring it along during this podcast, but we, it's, it's, still, it's still too early to tell what's going on in a lot of these like different it. asset classes. However, I think housing will Housing and, and, and self-storage is probably going to be a pretty safe area right now. And that's kind of where we focus at. Uh, Logan, uh, I can get, I'm ordering it for you right now on my <laughs> Amazon account so you can yes. get it. it. It should be in Prime All delivered right. within 24 hours. I'm it looking might show for up it. Sunday. You I'm looking know. for it. <laughs> it's under crystal balls for <laughs> Logan. Uh, I love asking guests on the program this question. And I'm very curious to see where this goes. Look, as someone who has a great discipline as a, former professional athlete has transferred that energy and passion into the business that you do. 
you're kicking on all cylinders. But there are days when we're not quite having our A game. When you're having trouble thriving, Logan, what practice do you seek or what individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Yeah, I use two things. And I go back to Tony Robbins' triad. And the triad, I can't remember the third one. It's One is physiology. The one is language. And then there's one more. Language, physiology, and something else. There's three things that can impact kind of the feeling that you're having throughout the day. And so this is what I do. When, I, when I'm feeling fear, uh, which I have an acronym for fear, meaning false emotions appearing real, I step back into them. Darren Hardy taught me this. So when you're feeling fear, the only way to get that to dissipate is to step back into whatever is causing you that fear. So I try to do that on a regular basis. If it's a conversation that I'm holding off on, if it's, a, it's an email that I don't want to send, a phone call that I'm, ty- I'm scared of making, I just do it. And I would just watch that, that dissipate uh, from my life. But that triad, physically moving has been an absolute game changer for me over the last 90 days. I have walked on average 200, 210 miles a month while I've been on the phone talking to folks over the COVID (laughs) period. I've had to buy four new pairs of New Balance shoes because I've worn them out walking. I don't run. I just walk. But it's, it just brings me energy. It brings me perspective. I see trees. I see kids on their bikes. I see, I see leaves. I see people. I mean, it's just, it, it has helped me to stay sane. So that's the physiology piece. And then I also try to work out every single day. So after this, you know, I've been on the podcast for, for four hours now. So I'll, I'll go start walking and be on phone calls for the rest of this afternoon. Uh, the other one is the language that I'm using. When my, when my wife gets sick, uh, she's like, man, I'm, I'm get sick. I really hope I don't get you sick. Cause like, I don't get sick. I, I don't mm. know how to get sick. Like I don't, I don't allow myself to get sick. My wife's saying, man, I'm really, I'm really stressed out. It seems like you're kind of, kind of stressed out. I'm like, I'm not stressed out. I'm just productive. And I don't say busy. I'm not busy. <laughs> I'm productive. She hates it. But it's this language piece. I've tricked my brain to like emotionally say that, okay, I have, I, I have what Ryan Holiday calls a negativity fast. I'm on a negativity fast every single day. And, and it's this big piece of, of this language that it, it, the words that we use are extremely important. And self-talk is so important. You know, self-talk is just asking yourself a question and then just going through the answer, right? And so these you know, Jason, you know, the way we got connected, we were walking yesterday. He's created what's called empowering why questions or EWQs. And I find that so fascinating that whenever I'm feeling down, I'm feeling a little, um, yeah, I'll just keep it PG. I'm just feeling a little bit down on myself. Um, I have, you don't need to keep it PG. (laughs) Empowering why questions that, that kind of lift me up. And then I also use music. I use music very strategically um, to, to help me get out of a funk. Uh, and then gratitude is the last one. If all those other three or four things didn't work, okay, fine. I'll just start being grateful because I, I, my big mission is in homeless stairs here in Kansas City. All I got to do is jump in my you know, truck, which many people don't have, out of my air conditioner house that many people don't have. Oh, I can't forget my water, which m- most people don't have. Um, it's real easy to get perspective once you start focusing on that gratitude. And usually, Lou, I, I'd say that if I if I'm still out, you know, you know, still in the dumps after those four things, I'm probably in the grave. To be honest with you, because <laughs> if I've gone through those those four steps, there's no way that I can't get myself out of of some sort of funk. I know it was a very long answer, but I hope I was able to break that down a little bit. I thought it was spectacular. You've got a lot of things, but the movement thing, I totally get with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Share with the listeners, Logan, if you could, all the places people can find you. This is the admin part of the show before we go down Fun Street, because we're going to have fun dancing down that road. So if you could uh, share with the listeners, all the places people can find you, websites, URLs, all that stuff. We will put it in the show notes, but it always gets more engagement when they hear it directly from you. Absolutely. I am, I am very adamant and focused on LinkedIn. And so uh, you can find me just by searching my name, Logan Freeman on LinkedIn. I post there three to four times a day. And then my website is livefreeinvestments.com, just as it sounds. And, and if you just fill out the contact form, that comes directly to my inbox, which might take me a few days to get back to you, but I will. I promise. I like it. 
permission to go down Fun Street with you here. I always like to ask permission because it might be a little strange and someone might not be ready for it, but it seems like you are. Seems permission like are granted. <laughs> okay. Logan, share with the listeners your all-time favorite movie. Well, I know what I answered. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retract that because I, my wife will make fun of me for this, but... I can't remember the name, Lou. It's Owen Wilson and the tall, dark-haired guy. It's all about weddings. Oh, Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers. There we go. I love that movie. Crab cakes and football. That's what Marilyn does well, my friend. Come on, Logan. (laughs) Oh, you motorboating son of a... (laughs) There you go. It's really good. (laughs) Yeah. Nicely done. Okay, so here's how this works. I'm going to give kind of like a topic and if you've ever you remember family feud you remember the oh yeah show? Love you know when it. they get to the, the the speed round at the end the only difference here is that i haven't surveyed the top 100 people i'm just surveying you so i'm going to say right. something and say the first thing that comes to mind that you like the most sound like a plan i'm in okay logan uh you mentioned earlier that uh you like music so is there a certain song that you use as your jam to get yourself pumped up <laughs> I could send you the Spotify playlist. However, I'll just say I'll just say this. There is a artist called Muscle Prodigy on Spotify. <laughs> and there's there's a song called Awake. And I have to caution you if you don't if you've never listened to something that intense before or goofy gurish, it's definitely right there. But that kicks me out of Everything that I ever need. So Muscle Prodigy, Awake is the song. Okay. Your favorite food that's not a dessert? Steak. Your favorite dessert? My favorite dessert is ice cream and particularly a hot fudge sundae. An activity you wish you did more of? Sat down with an actual book instead of listening to Audible. An activity you wish you did less of? working out, but still had all the results. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> if you could snap your fingers and go anywhere, where are you? I'd be in Hawaii with my wife and no two little kids. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Freeman, pleasure to have you on the show here today. This was insightful. We, we talked real estate. We talked shop. We talked about football. Any inspiring words to our entrepreneurial business focused listeners that, that love listening to these thriving individuals like yourself is anything you want to leave with the listeners before we go. The only thing that I'll say is that you always have to remember to be great because nothing else pays. I love that. Pleasure to have you on the program, my friend. Great to have you. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate you. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us until next time. Keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.